You had a lot of guys that did, didn't play in the spring, so can mm -hmm. you tell us about how those guys look now since they've got some time to make up for them? Yeah, no, I think they all look, it, it does not appear like they lost the spring. I mean, there's a little bit of rust. I mean, that's always going to happen, but I think there's rust on everybody. Um, so I don't think that the, the loss of the spring is, it, it means something. You can see that, you know, some, some little things in their mechanics and footwork show up. But uh, other than that, you know, they're healthy and they're ready to go. So Jordan Banks working with your group, is he moving over to the D-line or is he just... No, that's just something close? where, you know, you, you got to utilize the best talent that you have. He's a guy who's got some pass rush to him. Um, and so there could be a potential in the future that if we have certain packages we want to rush the passer, he could be an option for us. So if you're going to rush for us, you're going to rush the way we want to do it. We want to all be on the same page. And uh, we did the same thing with the bikes, and then Anthony Barr would come over and work with us periodically because we knew he's a guy that could be in those packages. So I always want those guys. The way we rush is a little bit different from everybody else where they want to teach every individual. Everything we do is about the individual doing their job but understanding the the whole big picture. So we rush together and if you're gonna be a part of it, you gotta come do what we do. Are you able to put in context just how much further ahead you feel now versus when you inherited this group? Yeah, sometimes I think sometimes I think you gotta do that because I think uh, it's important just to know where you're at, the benchmarks that you that you set forth last year that you've met them. So but the hard part is that you always have to build it from the ground up. And so what what it does is when you realize you're ahead you can accelerate those benchmarks uh, faster than you did last year, and that lets us get into bigger and better. And so you got to do that. You got to take inventory periodically, I think, as a coach. And Andre and I, one of the things Andre said, don't get too caught up in how good your D-line is because you're going to forget to build it from the ground up. You're going to start making mistakes that you never made. So for us, we build everything from the ground up and treat everything like uh, like we're building it from from, from scratch. Trevez has been getting into the target zone quite a bit, um, even against Kellen. What's it been like seeing him in those first two days? It's been awesome. And to his credit, so he came out the spring and everybody saw him in the spring game. The spring game is the first time that he rushed at the angles that we're coaching here. I mean, the NFL angles, you know, everything. Even I say NFL angles, but really what we did with the bike is what we do here now with the Sun Devils. And it's about bearing down on the quarterback. And so everything he's done and all these kids have done to go away from the quarterback, just vertically up the field. And we teach these angles, but they're more combative. So you have to be a more combative rusher. That's hard for a lot of guys, especially athletes like Trevez. But his way didn't work. And so getting him to understand that, dude, you have the ability, you got to do it our way. It finally clicked about a day or two, practice or two before the spring game, then the spring game, you saw it. To his credit, we had talked, he worked it all summer, and you see it immediately. He's, he's working the angles, he's doing it the right way. Still has some habits to break through, but he is light years ahead of where he was last spring. I'm way encouraged and, and proud of him to make it. It takes a lot of humility to take a step back and say, hey, I'm wrong, you're right, I'll do what you asked me to do. He's done that and put himself in a position to help us. So I think he's a way better player than he was in the spring and starting to see that potential because potential is when I mean, potential gets you fired, right? <laughs> but, but potential, yeah, exactly. You know, that's why I, I was, you don't always want a first rounder if they're not, you know, if they're not humble enough to, to commit to what you're asking them to do because everybody's going to get fired except for him. And then the defensive line, I mean, how, how big is it with the experience of the linebackers? How, how are they helping the growth of the defensive line too, working together as a unit? Man, I love our linebackers. I played linebacker back in the day. I got a lot of respect for the position, but those are guys I would love to play with. I got a lot of respect for all those guys, the way they handle themselves, the pride they take. But more than anything, you know, you got some in the world, you have finesse linebackers who don't want to get dirty and don't care about the D-line. These guys care about their D-line. They get us lined up. We know that when we take on these blocks and fight, fight, fight for them, they're going to do the right stuff to take those blocks off of us. And so I think it's huge. I think the experience, and, and then if I started, if I got into a fight today, I'm taking Black with me. Like, we're gonna be out there. Butler and I are out there fighting. Like, guy, when I can say that about those guys, uh, it makes me feel good. And everything we talk to our D-line is about us and, and making them right, sacrificing for them. And guys like that make it easy for us to sacrifice for them. Jermaine went through quite a bit in the last year, personally. Um, just. What are your kind of conversations with him about it as he's getting back out there? You know, uh, you can't control the things that happen to you. The, the conversations I've had with him is two things. First of all, I don't know how much his family means to him. And taking this opportunity to honor the people that he's, not just the people he's lost, but all his family, 
been through a lot. And um, my sincere hope for him is that he gets the best out of himself and can use this as fuel to honor them and get the best out of himself and have a great year. Because one of the reasons he's back with us, and, you know, his father and his brother were part of that conversation. They made that decision as a family and he called me to tell me, Coach, we've decided we want more year with you and with AP. And so we were a part of that decision. And I'm grateful to his father, his brother, his mother, and all of them that they believed in me and Herm, Marvin, all of us to, to and AP, all of us to, to do right by him. And so I told him that, that it means something to me personally, that I give you my best. And it's so funny because as good a player as he is, I talked to him today, the worst thing I can do to him is just say, hey, buddy, you know, you go do your own thing. That's not, you guys know, you guys can see that's not how I'm wired. So I checked him right now after practice and said, this is out of love, buddy. And I'm going to coach you hard because that's my promise to you. So we're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep going. And to his credit, he's responded to everything. He's been businesslike. He's changed his body, even though he was behind the eight ball. And um, I love coaching the guy. And I love him as a person. And I want him to get everything he's ever dreamt of. I want him to play outstanding because it makes us better, but also because that family's going to be rewarded if he does. Yeah, Amiri and Omar have also changed their bodies quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, what have you thought about just kind of how they're looking now at, at their current size? No, I'm, I'm Again, I'm proud of the guy, the commitment they made. I, I think Joe does an unbelievable job, and but you got to trust him and you got to commit to it just like it is for me. So uh, I'm proud of those guys. I like the way they look. I like the way they're moving. I think now they can grow naturally. I think for Mary, as high cut as he is, hips are this far off the ground. So if he gets so top heavy, he can't bend at the knees. And I think Joe did a great job now that he has his hands on him all year, diet, uh, you know, sleeping, routine, the whole thing they take care of. And Miri looks great, moves uh, much better. And um, and Omar, to me, you know, looks as explosive as I've seen him. But the best part is he's committed to the technique as well. And he's done some outstanding stuff these last two days. But like anything, I'm proud of what they did. I'm proud of what they're doing. And those guys are now on a trajectory to just keep climbing the mountain. I know, I know in spring practice you missed a, lo missed a lot of players. Is that the credit? to Joe Connolly portraying a lot of those players that miss big portions of spring, maybe sometimes the entire spring, to come in the first two days of practice and perform the way they did. Absolutely. I think Joe's top notch. I think Joe does an unbelievable job. And that presentation he showed to us before we started was, <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like it. I got a lot of respect for Joe. I love the way he works. I love the way he pushes those guys. More than anything, I love the way he educates those guys. And so I'm, I always feel like there's two parts of coaching, motivation, education. And the guys aren't great teachers. They overdo it with the motivation, right? And they don't teach guys anything. And when guys are great teachers, there's a balance there. And I just see that, man. I've seen the, the best guys do it. And Joe's one of those guys, man. He's top notch, and he deserves all the credit for getting these guys ready because it's hard for us coaches, we're control freaks. That's why we have ADD, like, and that's also why we have the worst attention spans. I'll try talking to a coach and look where his eyes go, right? <laughs> but we're control freaks, man. We're used to talking, we're used to controlling things. So to be able to trust somebody like Joe and say, you got it. Just let me know when you need me to chime in, but you got it. That's a hard ask for coaches. And uh, I feel 100% comfortable giving them to Joe and saying, do your thing. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for that.